So tonight, we're going to start with, um, with our guest speaker, and I'm just so delighted to have you here. James Beale is here tonight from the Sons of the American Revolution. He's also George Washington in costume for our kids later on this week. So we are thrilled to hear what you have to say about George Washington and anything else you'd like to share with them because you can talk about far more than that. So I will please help me welcome James Beale. Sons of the American Revolution, to be a, an official member of the Sons of the American Revolution, S somewhere along the line, one of your ancestors either has to have fought or had something to do with the American side of the revolution. If you were with the British on the other side, you have to join a different organization. <laughs> and just to give you an idea, we started as the sires of the American Revolution. In California. <clears throat> what they would do is they'd put on their uniforms and they'd walk around in San Francisco and various spots, Sacramento, and they were just trying to make sure, this is back the right, right after the Civil War, make sure people would understand what everybody fought for at that time. So they wouldn't forget. That's the reason for the Sons of the American Root Revolution. It is an organization that is based on people whose ancestors fought. That's true, but that's not the purpose of the organization. There's some in my organization that think it is. They, they and I don't get along real well, but that's another, another tale for another day. My ancestor, one of them fought at Lexington for three and a half days. He went back home to Haverhill, Massachusetts, and he proceeded to become one of the busiest people you'd ever know on committees. Something about lead flying around his head, I guess, because he decided the best of that. Now, John Beale, my other ancestor, fought at Second Battle of Saratoga, which he would have been under Arnold at the time. I think you remember Benedict. He's the one that won the battle for him. And then another, another battle he was in was the Battle of Monmouth Courthouse, which was the first battle in which we actually went after the British with about the same amount of force in he and that's when George fired one of his generals in the middle of the battle. Because he was not doing what he was supposed to do. Anyway, you know, you know that. anybody uh, know the, the history behind Tea Party? Some sure Tea Party people? Anybody will volunteer to give me an idea of what, what it is? What you were told in school? The um, British had a tech on tea, and the were upset about that, so a group of them went on to the ship, the Indians, and the Indians watched the boat. You have the same story I got when I was in grade school. Mm -hmm. However, the, real, the rest of the story, which is much more interesting, they, for some reason, had left out. It, you're right. It, there was a tax on tea, but there was a tax, there were like nine or 12 taxes, I can't remember the exact number. And the, the, what happened, and this was because of the war with the French. They needed to make money, so they were going after us for the, the money. So, the king decides, okay, I'm going to put out these taxes, and it became so unpopular that he undid all but one. And that tax was tea. Now, the guy was pretty clever. You know, we always make him look like an idiot, but he was not an idiot. What he did is he said, you know what? I'm going to take that tax, keep the tax, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to take the tea directly from where it comes from into the colonies, which means the tea will be cheaper than if you bring it in illegally. 
okay, which is probably what my ancestors were doing, so they're bringing it to illegal. <laughs> <clears throat> so, he figures, these colonists have figured it out, and they're going to start buying the tea and paying the tax, and then eventually we'll put it back the way it was, and I'll still have gotten one tax through. Because after all, he's king, right? Well, I don't know, some guy was by the name of Sam Adams, you may have heard of him. He's on a beer can. <laughs> that Sam Adams, not the lawyer Sam Adams. Anyway, Sam uh, decided the ship comes in. This poor fool captain shows up in Boston. And he's sitting there going, okay, got my cargo here. I got to go straight through. It's going to be a great day. He grows up, and Sam and the boys meet him at the dock. And they say, <laughs> Sorry, but if anything comes off of that ship other than your person, your people, and your personnel, if that tea leaves that ship, you're going to have a really bad accident. The ship's going to burn by accident. Now, the other part of this is the government, you had to report your cargo within so many, I think it was 11 days or something. If you didn't do that, the governor of that particular colony could take everything on board and it was all his. Okay, you got nothing. So, in the midst, he says, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave. He tells the governor, I'm going to leave. The governor says, no, you're not. You see the candles? Yeah. He says, if you start to play anchor, we're going to blow your boat up right out in the middle of the harbor. So this captain goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, trying to get this resolved. And of course, neither side's going to budge. So that, just before the sun goes down, Sam's out there in the wharf and he takes the kind of study. That's when he let the arm and says, I'm going to have a beer with us, boys. He says, how can I do that? My ship's going to either be burned or blown up. And any way you look at it, it's not going to be good for me. You know, since we got it under control. Don't worry. So finally, it convinces them. They go out and have a couple of beers. They roll him out to his ship, and you know, he's cool. About the middle of the night, this guy's up on deck worried, and some hand grabs him from behind and says, "Don't say anything." Between the feathers and everything, he pretty much knew who was grabbing him from behind. So he's watching these amateurs trying to unload the cargo. And he goes, this isn't working. But he has figured out what they figured out. So he has his men help him unload the tea into the harbor. <laughs> Once it went from to the Indians raiding the boat and dumping the tea in, so that was, you know, somebody trying to, that was theft, basically. Then Lloyds of London had to pay for it. <laughs> so the reason for the tea party actually was to make sure that the home folks didn't get mad at the Patriots. This way, this guy got his, his money, his boat didn't get sunk, the tea didn't get landed. Clever. We don't give our people enough credit. <laughs> These guys are smart. They're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Anyway, I just thought you'd like that one since you are the tea party. <clears throat> so you just got to figure out how to be crafty. And still get your point down. How many of you realize that the first Navy was George Washington's Navy? Yes, sirs and men. This is exactly what happened. George takes over the army right after a battle of Bunker Hill, which is really not the Breed's Hill, not Bunker Hill, but it's, that's another story in this. So look, what we're going to talk about is that model back there and its history and what went on. So you can remember from history the names of the people in the battles of the sea battles, right? John Paul Jones, anybody heard of him? John Barry, Barry, yep. 
Thomas no. Biddle? Abram Whipple? See? No, no. No Whipples? No Whipples. The Valiant Mudford. Now, surely you know the Valiant Mudford. No. He was actually more famous than John Paul Jones. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> Skimmer? Manly? Any of those guys? Tucker? All those guys were captains in the Army Navy of George, of, uh, George Washington. Now, how did that happen? <laughs> you say, how would, how would we not have a Navy uh, and George would start his own with the Army? Well, George shows up in Boston. And you have to realize that that was, that little battle uh, was not really, do you th how many think the British won? The British won. They did, but if they kept winning like that, they were going to lose big. Because the British had lost, they had a total of 2,400 troops, they lost 1,150 out of the 21, out of the, the 2,400. Does that sound like a good loss ratio? Probably not. The Americans had 441 off, loss, loss, and 1,500 soldiers. So, Despite their superior numbers, superior armament, and everything else, the General Howe and his boys were not scoring too well and obviously were losing big time. So, at that point, the General had gone back to Boston and he'd settled there and he decided he wasn't going to leave for a lot. What he didn't realize is the only reason they stopped shooting at them was they were running out of powder, okay? So George is sitting here, and he's got a very small amount of powder sitting in him. He cannot take. If the British decide to leave, really all he can do is throw rocks at some point, and it's going to be fairly quick. And he might be able to catch them with swords, but they've got guns. So <clears throat> he looks out, and he's looking at this mass of mass. Boston Harbor looks like a forest. And he's thinking, and they're bringing in any, everything he needs. They're bringing in guns. They're bringing in powder. Hell, they're bringing in the, the wood to, to burn in the stoves. Because they think that the Americans are still got powder. And George is out there in the morning, setting off his cannon in the morning, so they think he's got powder. He's got a bunch of empty barrels sitting. So, he's trying to figure out how he's going to get some powder. Because he's not going to win the war without powder. So his next step is, how do I get it? I've got all these ships, little ships coming in from the British. They have what I need. I'm going to have to have ships to go out. Well, this is before they had privateers. Everybody understand what a privateer is? It's a le legalized pirate. There's a big difference. You don't get hung as a legalized pirate. You get hung as an illegal pirate. Usually what happened is you came to privateer and you said, this is a good deal, and then started praying on the wrong ships, and pretty soon you know, you're swimming from the yard or something. So, anyway. So, <clears throat> George's solution to the problem is, he says, I'm going to rent, steal a few boats. One of them was that ship back there, the Hannibal. And if you're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance at that time, that's the flag you'd be pledging to. That was the first flag George had. And it is really, really a scary flag for an enemy. It's a pine tree that, and the flag says, an appeal to heaven. Doesn't that strike fear in your heart? <laughs> so, George gets nine of these scooters, and finally he gets one out. I mean, it, it's, it's a castle. He's got four four-pan cannons on it which is an itty, bitty, bitty, bitty cannon, in case you're wondering. So here's George. He sends this group out. First mission, they go out, and they come back, and they don't bring anything in, and they almost get taken by the British. Second mission, they go out, and they actually do get a ship, and they bring it in, Some, and they figure out <clears throat> Uh, 
they start bringing it in and they get caught on the sandbar. So the ship gets to the unity actually got in, but it was a prize. Of, they had a prize of a prize. That was an American ship that got caught and George knew the owner. So George gave the ship back to the owner, right? Especially since he was giving him funding. Funding back there was important since Congress wasn't giving them any funding. So they get into that and George gets the, the, the ship ends up on a reef, breaks its back. Uh, they, they fire at it from the shore and keep the British off, but when they drag it in, they figure out it's gone. It's funny. So, George's next problem is the crew decides to meet me. So not only has George got the first ship that took the first boat, that's first, first, the first ship to be broken, but he has the first ship that has a mutiny. And you got to understand, Think about all this. This is his first couple of run sorties out into the ocean. And I mean, George doesn't know anything about ships except he put stuff on it, it went to England, and he got stuff back. Now all of a sudden, he's in charge of these things, and he doesn't know anything about it. So George is waiting. You know, the Navy's still sort of going along, and they, they finally do get a Navy in the 1700s. But he keeps his Navy for good until 1777. And the patience of a man to go in, not, I mean, he knew about Army stuff, because he'd been an officer in the British Army, and he understood that. But he's, he's with a little ship like, all these little ships going out. Now, they saved his rear. In particular, one, we sort of talked about a guy by the name of uh, the Valiant Mudford, which, <clears throat> They had gotten, he had gotten, gone out in one of the ships, and he got the um, Hope, which is sort of interesting that that was the name of the British vessel they captured. Guess what was on the Hope? Powder, guns. It was like, uh, the British said at the time, they said, if I had wanted, if George had wanted a ship sent to him, this would have been it. And it comes in with no escort, the little Franklin comes out there to meet it. It's about the size, size of that one. It's got that flag on it, and they're thinking it's just a local ship to help them, you know, find where they're going, where they call them. Uh, yeah. So he's, he's, you know, they're going to guide him in, right? But they don't guide him in to the right. They don't send him to, to Boston or to, uh, the, by that time they had Boston. They don't send him into New York. They send him into uh, a little bit like north of Boston. And by the time the guys figure out what's going on, sailors are on board, they're like, you pull that, we're going to put a hole in your gut, and we're going to drop the old board. So, the <clears throat> ship gets in there, it, uh, they start trying to unload it, but the British figure this out pretty quick, so they come after them. And the Franklin goes out to help. And the Franklin gets, it's a bar, I guess they were used to it, bringing in the bars, and it was kind of a lot of that. But these weren't bars with drinks on them. So anyway, they they get into a little fight. Well, Mudford's trying to keep the boys from abandoning the ship, and he's the one that gets. They were using pikes, which is you know the pike. Everybody know what a pike is? It's a long stick with it's like a spear, basically, with a little nastier stuff on it. You can open up armor with it. So they get that. Yeah, you, you just sort of like, it's like a can opener on a really long stick, a really big can opener. So they pick it up, and they get to Mugford, and his dying uh, words are, don't give up the vessel. So now we know where John Paul Jones got it, and he didn't want to get copyrighted on it, so he went ahead and changed the name. <clears throat> Mudford had a funeral that went for three days. Say that. Because he was such was a wonderful guy. That was long so that gives you an idea of what was going on now. Two things convinced the British they needed to give up. I mean, obviously they were having trouble winning. 
But the other thing is, George's nine little schooners, they took 55 vessels. And this isn't the Navy, this is George's side Navy, okay? So they took 18 brigs, which are two masted, 11 schooners similar to those, 13 ships. Now, a ship has got three masts and a square rig, and it's pretty good size. 13 sloops are a little, are a little bigger than that. So that gives you an idea. I mean, that was sort of a hole. Then, when they finally did get around to sending out all the uh, <clears throat> guys with the uh, their uh, uh, taking care of the, the uh, doing it for, for profit, the privateers, all hell broke loose. They couldn't keep, I mean, Lloyd's was going nuts. Because they'd sent a ship out and they weren't really sure any of them would come back. And Lloyd's, you know, Lloyd's was raising the rates, so they, and what was England? England thrived, and one thing that kept England going was shipping. The War of 1812, I had a lady on, we went to uh, the Mediterranean a couple weeks ago, and we had a lady from Canada, and she just couldn't understand why they gave back all that land up there that they conquered in 1812. I'm thinking, what you don't understand, lady, is the privateers were so bad in the War of 1812 between French and Americans that they couldn't afford, whatever you want, we'll give it to you. They probably would have given them Canada if they could have thought they could, you know, if the Americans thought they could get away with it. But the privateers are really between, on the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812, you're going to find the privateers did a lot of damage, a lot more damage than the Navy did, the, the American Navy, or British Navy, for that matter. <clears throat> yeah, land a profit motive. They got a percentage, and they got paid, which was part of the problem with George's group. A lot of them never got paid. And, uh, but the thing was, you did not want to go out and become a pirate. That was a bad idea. You had to have a letter of mark. No letter of mark and no recognized letter of mark, you were in trouble. Anyway, that is my spiel. I try to keep it short and sweet. But I am going to put a plug in. If you really want to sort of have a feel for George and how patient he was and how willing to innovate, this is a book. It's called George Washington Schooners, the First American Navy. Chester G. Hearn did it. You'll notice uh, sort of a picture of a ship in it that looks close to mine, actually, for some reason. <clears throat> and it is, it's a fascinating read. It's not particularly hard. But to me, this is the type of stuff the kids need to learn in school. Because this is a whole lot more interesting than me. It's not real interesting learning a bunch of dates and people if you don't understand why you're learning them. So anyway, I'm going to turn this back over. And if you guys have any questions, let me know.